Welcome to Unleash Your Audacious Confidence on Win Win Women TV. This show is all about sharing the tips, tools, and techniques that will allow you to step boldly in the direction of your dreams despite your feelings, fears, or past failures. To imagine what's possible for yourself and live the life you deserve. Welcome to the Unleash Your Audacious Confidence on Win Win Women TV. I'm your host, Alicia Curry. And on today's show, we are going to be sharing all about defining your superpowers. This is one of my favorite things, one of my favorite topics, really. And last episode, if you want to go back and look at it, we were talking about self-awareness and building self-awareness and the importance of building self-awareness. And I wanted to continue that conversation because um, building self-awareness is part of defining your superpowers. Now, hopefully you can all hear me. My microphone is working. Uh, so hopefully you can hear me. I did try last week to... I created a whole presentation. I shared it and it didn't quite share the way I thought it was going to share. So um, I'm not going to bother with the presentation anymore. I'm just going to sit here and talk to you. Uh, but before I get going with that, I want to encourage you to do two things. Number one, to check out winwinwomen.com. There are so many amazing resources on Win Win Women for you to check out. And number two, to connect with me on alicia360.com. If you connect with me on alicia360.com and you go to that site and you'll see a button that says free gift. So today's show as we're talking about defining your superheroes, I mean your superpowers, oh, defining your superpowers. If you look at number four in the seven secrets to audacious confidence, that's about your spiritual tags. That's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. So you can download that free gift. It's the seven secrets to audacious confidence. So if you go to alicia360.com where it says free gift, you click on that button and you can download the free gift of the seven secrets to audacious confidence. Now, those are the two things I want you to go ahead and do for me. Check out winwinwomen.com and go connect with me on all social media platforms on uh, alicia360.com. So I have a few notes that I took that I wanted to, to share. And just as a, a, um, a recap sort of, of what we talked about last time is really about getting your awareness antennas up. Like why is it important to become more self-aware? We talked about the Johari window and how there are areas of ourselves that we don't know. There are areas that others know about us that we don't know, but then there are areas that nobody knows and we don't know about ourselves. And that's part of, you know, housed in our subconscious mind. And it's how do we extract that? Because our subconscious mind operates at the numbers I heard, 400 billion bits per second whereas the conscious mind operates at 2,000 bits per second. So there's a huge disparity between those two numbers. And so in order for something to become conscious, we have to slow it down, slow that processor down enough to pay attention so that we can see it and we can recognize it. And that's what self-awareness really is. It's slowing down that subconscious mechanism that's running at 400 billion bits per second and being able to consciously be aware of what is happening, um, what we're doing, how we're showing up. If we're, if, if we're showing up a particular way all the time and it is creating issues or problems or situations or challenges, don't keep doing that. Stop yourself and say, huh, what am I doing, saying, or be, who am I being that is creating this situation here? And that's where self-awareness comes in. Now, where our superpowers comes in, that's that heightened level of self-awareness. You know, when a, a superhero 
starts discovering that they have powers. And then they go out and they start testing those powers. They start testing to see just how strong they are, how powerful they are, how invincible they are, how high they can fly before they pass out or how fast they can go. So start testing those powers. And that's what I want you to start doing today. So I did a pre-show on this on my YouTube channel. So if you have not yet connected with us on YouTube, this is your opportunity to go to youtube.com at, you know, slash at Alicia Curry and check us out. And my name is spelt at the bottom corner there. But what I talked about on that show is that while we are a spirit, so we're, we're a triune being, we're a spirit in a body with a mind, right? We're three parts in one, spirit, soul, body. I never really knew that growing up until I started like learning that at the church that I go to, that I've been going to for almost three decades. We have a spirit. We are a spirit man. We have a soul and we live in a body. Now, our soul is our mind, our will, and our intellect. And our mind, we have a subconscious mind and we have a conscious mind. But even within that, we have three functions within our mind, within our brain, actually, that help us understand how we operate, how we take action, how we think, how we feel, what do we do? That's the cognitive, the affective, and the conative. Cognitive is the way our mind thinks. It's the thinking part of our mind. And we have talents, we have skills, we have gifts, we have uh, strengths in our cognitive mind. Our affective is how we feel. That's our emotional mind. That's that's our our drive, our motivations, our behaviors, our desires, our personality, how we feel. That's in our uh, affective part of our mind. And we have strengths in that affect. We have some powerful strengths in that affect. We have some, some blind spots in our affect and we have caution areas in our affect, but we have some skills, some gifts, some talents in our affect. And then there's the conative part of the mind, which is how we do things. And that is our instinctive, our instincts. That's where we have our unique abilities to do certain things. And that inside of that conative part of the brain, again, that's how we do. That's how we take action. That's how we strive. So that's, again, our drives, our mental energy, our innate force, our instincts for doing something is in that conative part of our mind. And that when we look at those three parts of the mind and we combine them, that's where we find our superpowers. That's where our gifts, our talents, our skills, our unique abilities, all those, those powerful things about us where that we can lean into and lean on are found in those parts of the mind. Some of it is subconscious, some of it is conscious. So we want to consciously dig all of that. We want to excavate all those gifts, all those talents, all those skills, all those those superpowers that you have and and uh, have conscious awareness of them, define them, recognize them, and then be able to activate them, use them, uh, lean into them. Because in those strengths, you know, God has created us each with unique abilities, but it's a combination. It's everyone's combination is different. Everyone has a little bit of different way that that they will pull together. Not even identical twins have the same talents, assets, gifts, and skills. They're all unique to us. And so my way, my way of identifying and defining those is through using different assessment tools, because then we can assess these things and we can, we can pull together the narrative of who you are, and then we can share that and we can lean into the strengths and the things that are not strengths of ours, the things that are caution areas or blind spots for us, we can find ways to get support around those things instead of fighting against it and trying hard and burning up our energy to do those things. 
So last week I did share, I shared in my slide, kind of what my narrative looks like and sounds like for my unique talents and gifts and skills. And uh, I'm going to be doing a workshop on April 12th and 13th of this year, it's 2024. If you're watching this at any time past that, then connect with me. If you connect with me at lisa360.com, you'll see when I'm doing this again, because this is going to be an ongoing thing. But it'll give you an opportunity to find your tags, your talents, assets, gifts, and skills, and then create your own narrative for what that could look like. And so um, I'll share my narrative with you in a, in in before the the close of the show. But I want you to do a couple things. Um, we have some free assessments that we can give give you to do if you're interested in finding out more. Again, if you connect with me, Alicia three hundred and sixty, and you send us an email, um, I will I will share those resources with you to take some of these assessments for yourself to learn some some things about you, how you communicate best, what are your best um, affective affective ways of being, your behavioral types, um, when you were born, how how you were, what your personality is from birth. You know, there are there are several things that I can share that's not, going to cost you anything. And these things can help you start identifying some of those tags, as I call them, your talents, your assets, your gifts, and your skill. We can start identifying some of those spiritual tags. Um, but before you do that, I want you to try something for me. I want you to take out a blank piece of paper and a pen or pencil Find a pen or a pencil, take out a blank piece of paper. And I want you, and I'll do this with you. I'll actually do it on my tablet and I'll show you. Because we want to talk about the difference between instincts and learned behavior. So when I talk about talents, assets, gifts, and skills, let me define some of those for you. So your talents are things that are innate to you. So we're going to do an exercise to help you understand what's innate to you. And that can be found in your cognitive mind and that can also be found in part of your affect. Your assets are things that you have gained along the way. So awards that you've won. You know, I'm surrounded with awards, crowns, trophies, things that I've won, that uh, degrees that I've had, uh, positions I've held, um, on boards, on certain committees, those are all assets. And I even include my height because I'm short. I look at my height as an asset. I'm sh I'm short. I'm a tiny mite, so you know I can fit into small spaces. That's what I say. My my that's my uh, asset. Mm -hmm. So whatever you think is an asset to you, you can list that those things as assets. You can write them down. And I'm telling you, catalog these things. Write them down. Um, so talents, assets, gifts. Gifts are things that are meant to serve others. Things that you are could be innate to you. They could be things that you've learned or developed, skills that you've learned or developed that are innate, that are to serve others. Those are That's why I call them gifts because they're not meant just for you. It's meant to serve others. And then your skills are things that you've you've learned over time. We've learned a lot of skills. There are a lot of skills that we've learned. In fact, we've learned a lot of skills to overcome some of the, the challenges that we have uh, as far as um, we have certain strengths, but there are things that I don't like to call them weaknesses because they're not. Um, but there are certain things that we don't do as well as others. And so we've learned to develop skills to help us where we might have a shortfall. Um, and that those are, that's how I define your tags, your talents, your assets, your gifts, and your skills. Now, talents are innate, skills are learned. Talents are innate to you, skills are learned behavior. 
learned behaviors in the cognitive mind. Your cognitive mind is the things that you've learned, your knowledge, your, your expertise, your, your intellect, how fast you can process, what you can learn, how do you learn. Uh, those are in your cognitive, the cognitive part of your mind. So when I talk about innate skills, I want you to do this exercise. I want you to find a blank sheet of paper. And so I'm going to open up a blank sheet of paper right now on my tablet. And I'm going to do this with you. If I can find a blank sheet, my goodness. There are all these, all these. Um... All right, I can't find it. There we go, blank sheet. So I just created a blank sheet of prepper. If I, if I, if I did this right, I would have actually shared my screen um, with this, but. I want you to, maybe I could still do it. Maybe I could still share screen, let's see. Um, it may not share because I have to connect to the app and all kinds of things. So it may not share. So let me not waste time doing that. I'm just gonna do this. I want you to take a pencil and I want you to write your first name as quickly as you can. All right, I'm done with mine. That's my first name. So whichever hand you instinctively pick that pencil up with to write, that is innate to you. Because uh, handedness is instinctive. It's innate. Now, take that pen, put it in your non-dominant hand, and I want you to write your name as quickly as you can. All right, I just did mine. There it is. <laughs> so that's my left hand. Now, how did that feel? Was it as comfortable as your dominant hand? Was it a little shaky? Did it take you longer? Was it a little bit harder to do? Was it sloppier? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't innate to you. So when we push and try to do things that's not innate to us, that's not within our how we were designed to operate, we're operating outside of our superpowers. We're operating, and sometimes we do that because, like I said, learn behavior because the, the school we went to, the teachers we had told us we needed to do it that way, so we did it that way. And but it's it was kind never really comfortable. It was always kind of challenging and difficult, but we didn't want to say anything. We tried our best and we keep trying our best, but it's not innate to us. Now, when you find your superpowers, when you're able to really find and define them, and like I said, I use different different um, assessment tools to help you find that. When you start operating in your innate abilities, in those unique innate abilities, you'll find that success is just like that dominant hand. It comes a lot easier. It's a lot more fluid. It's simpler. It's faster than when you're switching to your non-dominant hand to do it. When you're operating outside your natural zone of genius. So the thing about your cognitive mind and finding that innate strength that's within you is that that is a subconscious commitment to take action in that way. Those talents are subconscious in you. You did not, someone didn't tell you to pick up the pencil with your left hand or right hand. That was a subconscious thing. Now, if you broke your dominant hand or something happened to your dominant hand and you had to learn how to write with your other hand, again, it was difficult at first, but you got the hang of it and you can use that other hand uh, quite effectively, but it's still never going to be as comfortable as when you use your dominant hand. And so we want you to be in that committed zone of doing things. And that's where you find your superpowers. Because there's a difference between when you intend to do something 
you know, I, my kids or someone, whenever they tell me they intended to do something, I'm like, yeah, it's nice. It's nice thought, but it didn't get done. Just because you intended to do it doesn't mean that it, it got done. Intentions are nice, but they don't, without action, it's just a nice thing that you said that you were going to do. Attempts. Now you can attempt. So att uh, intending is well-meaning. Attempting something, well, that's a try. I tried. It didn't work. I tried. Oh, well, I tried. There's no commitment behind that. But when you commit to something, it's done. And that's where we want to be. With our in that's where our instincts lie. And that's where we want to be in operating. We want to be in that level of commitment, even especially when it's subconsciously committing to something. Now, the way for you to know that is to take a conative assessment, and that way you can be subconsciously committed. Now, that one I cannot give you for free. That one, there is a charge from the company to get that one, but it is one of the most powerful uh, opportunities for you to not just build self-awareness, but also to understand those superpowers. So, um, when we're looking at identifying your superpowers, we want to talk about your talents, your assets, your gifts, and your skills. And when you can do that for yourself, something very valuable happens. Especially if you're entrepreneurial or a solopreneur and you find yourself doing everything yourself. But doing, doing it yourself is actually a poverty middle class mindset and it's not a wealth generating mindset when you are committed to doing it yourself you're trying with your non-dominant hand to do a lot of things that you're not naturally gifted towards you're not naturally wired to do you're not in your zone of genius operating in your superpowers It reduces your creativity, your vision, your values, your worth. And instead of exploring more into your unique ability and honing those skills more, you find yourself stuck. Uh, sucking up time, sucking up energy, and you're in a loop of sameness. Like I said, it stunts your creativity your value of yourself, your vision, your worth. You can't be your best self when you're operating outside your zone of genius. You cannot. You just can't. So what I want you to do is connect with me if you want to know more about how to define these superpowers. But I'm going to read my... Uh, paragraph, the definition of what my zone of genius and my superpowers are. I'm just going to read it over here in the screen. So if I'm looking over here, it's because I'm reading on the screen. So uh, my zone of genius lies in visionary leadership and innovative problem solving within transformative environments. That's, I'm a leader, I'm a visionary leader, innovative problem solver, in transformative environments. That means that my environment does not stay the same. I, I thrive in environments where there are big changes happening. I, it says she excels when guiding others based on invitations. So you invite me in, you invite me to speak, you invite me to share, you invite me to, to, a work, to do a workshop. You, you know, when people invite me in, like even you, looking at this video as an invitation for me to come into your, to speak into your life. Um, so she excels when guiding others based on invitations, particularly in roles that align with her core values and allows for creative expression and expansion. Her drive is to seek out and develop meaningful, innovative solutions that can significantly impact the world around her. She has a need for autonomy and freedom to explore different avenues without being con constrained by traditional structures. 
She's her best in environments that embrace change, value individual contributions, and encourage the pursuit of significant transformative outcomes. There's that word again, transformative. Alicia should seek roles where she can act as an advisor, strategist, or consultant, providing guidance and direction based on deep insights and innovative thinking, rather than being tied to routine tasks or rigid systems. Her ability to inspire, motivate, and think outside the box, combined with her desire for meaningful work and independence, positions her uniquely to lead initiatives or projects that require fresh perspectives and a human-centric approach. To fully leverage her zone of genius, she should focus on opportunities that allow her to challenge the conventional wisdom and contribute to the greater good, ensuring that her work is not only innovative, but also profoundly impactful and aligned with her intrinsic motivations and values. So that's just a little narrative. So when I read something like that, I know how to position myself. I know where I should be and where I should spend my time. That is my dominant handedness right there. Uh, when I'm in those environments that can be transformative, when I'm able to lead the charge, when I'm able to, to help others develop, when I'm able to, to be the visionary and start big projects and help, help people see the bigger vision of it, and then help others to develop into who they need to be to work through that vision. That's where I'm best. That's why it says uh, advisor, strategist, consultant. I'm not the one who will be implementing the work. For so long, I tried to be the implementer of all the things. And because I'm very, I have a very persistent personality and I, I am so competitive. I want to get it right. I want to get it done and I want to get it right. I would push and push and push to do things, to learn things, to develop myself into that person. But it was exhausting. It took me more time and it wasn't where I needed to be. So instead of being the implementer that got frustrated and, and was always like energetically drained, I thrive when I'm able to be that visionary and problem solve that problem solver that's the, the thinker that thinks differently and that comes up with different ideas. I'm a very ideation uh, driven person. So when I'm able to ideate, when I'm able to brainstorm, when I'm able to speak and share, those are areas that I am able to shine. So what is your superpower? Where, where can you find your zone of genius? If you need assistance, like pulling this together and, and grabbing hold of the, the words in these paragraphs and understanding your unique abilities and how do I step into my superpowers, please connect with me, alicia360.com, um, because I want to work you through these, these uh, different types of tools that can help you understand all these things about yourself so that when you read your paragraphs, when you read that, you can say, ah, now I know exactly where, where I need to be, what I need to be doing and where I shouldn't be wasting my time trying to do things. So I hope this has been beneficial to you. The, the last thing I want to close with is when we're dealing with self-awareness and when we're dealing with, with leadership especially, I want you to think about being conscious about how you're going about doing these things. There are two ways to be. There are two ways to be in this. You can be open, curious, and committed to learning, or you can be closed, defensive, and committed to being right. When you're closed, defensive, and committed to being right, you cannot harness your superpowers. You cannot dig in and find your unique ability. Mm -hmm. And you cannot operate in that effectively. So think about how you're being in interactions 
and even learning new information? Are you open, curious, and committed to learning? Whether it's from a colleague or from a stranger or from me, <laughs> where do you sit above or below that line? So if you're above the line, you're open, curious, and committed to learning. If you're below the line, you're closed, defensive, and committed to being right. So I want you to understand how you can build your superpowers, how you can really connect to your talents, assets, gifts, and skills, those tags that we talked about, and how you can start operating in your dominance the way you were designed to operate. And with that, I am going to wish you to be bold, to be brave, and every day to do one thing to step out with audacious confidence. And I will see you on another episode of Leading with Audacious Confidence here on Win Win Women TV.